Hi and welcome to how to JS videos where today we'll be showing a short tutorial on how to make a basic like button. And here is the like button that we'll be making today. Simple enough? I believe so. Also, we'll also be using jQuery and uh, that's about it. Just basic jQuery for DOM selection and just mainly JavaScript. So as you can see here, I have just a basic uh, like button ID on a div that says like this article, which is basically the same as what you can see right here. And I've had some styles applied to it. This is the original state or also what I'm going to be calling the unlike state. And the styles for these states are right here. Liked has a background of blue. This simply has a background of white. Okay, fair enough. And the uh, main code for this like button can be found here. These are the styles that will be dynamically applied when I'm clicking to say whether the button has been liked or unliked already. So this is also the code that we'd like to have in the very end one line that takes in the element that we want to make a like button or a like element or like thing it doesn't have to be a button it could be anything that's in of any valid html element and this is the text that you will see when an element is liked and this is the text that you will see when an element is in its original state or not liked so at the end of our code, we like to just have one line that goes like this. But to give you the basic example on how to do this, just using um, just a few basic lines of code is this. Our friend jQuery has a document.ready function that says that when the DOM is ready, we want to do some things. So just to briefly go over um, jQuery, um, you can find any information you need on jQuery at jQuery.com. This is a jQuery DOM selector that just lets you select any element or class or element by its like actual tag name. And what I'm saying here is on click run a function. And whatever I put inside of this function is what will be run when I click this element, which I've created down here. Let's get that out of there, which I've created down here. So what we're going to do now is run through what these statements say. And this is the actual working code that allows this like button to work right now. And we'll just show you that it works. So if this button on the load of the page, when this thing is clicked, happens to have a class of liked already, meaning this is already liked, then we want to do three things. We want to remove the current class of liked. Then we want to add the class of unliked to give it the style of it being unliked. And then we want to change the text back to the original text of like this article, as you can see right here. But if we decide to click this and it is not liked, it is in the state that it is now, then we want to remove the class of unlike if it happens to be there. And then we want to add a class of liked to give it the styling appearance of being liked. And then also add the text liked in our case. That text can be whatever you want it to be. So right now, looking at the Chrome Web Inspector, we'll see that this has a class right now of unlike. So when we click this, we should get the opposite class of like and we should see our styles and this class should dynamically update when I click and it does just as we expect so this is a pretty simple set of code is pretty much you're just changing styles when a condition is true but I'm noticing that there's a lot of lines in code of here and we probably could refactor this a bit so let's start doing that it looks like when I look at this code that this all could be one function. And this can also be a function. So what I've done is I've taken 
these lines of code and move them up into, for in this case, the unlike and like functions. And instead of giving them the actual name, because in this case, the name of this points to the like button, I'm saying that this is going to point to whatever we pass in as the element and we want to do something to that element. So if it's the case that we're calling the like function, then we'll remove the class of unlike and add our classes and do all of the same steps that we just went over in the original function. So we have those statements broken off into a like and unlike function. So if this is already liked, this is going to become the unlike function. And if this is not, we're going to call this like function. Seems to be getting smaller already, right? Looks a little smaller. Would you agree? Yeah? All right. Cool. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this get a little smaller. So what we're going to do now, since we have the functions like and unlike, we can use these within a more complete function that will handle the work for us called like element, whatever that element is. So this will take the same, a similar set of arguments as the other like and unlike functions take. It takes an element and it takes some like text and it takes some default text, which is also the text that you can say is the unlike text. So when this element is passed in here, it will receive a click event, and then we create a variable called is liked, saying, is this, does this have the class liked? And we store the result of this into this variable. And this now just will return us true or false. So if this happens to be true, then we're going to hop over and use the unlike function. Otherwise, if this happens to be false, we're going to hop over here and like it. And the element that is going to be unliked is the same element that got clicked in both cases. The element that would be liked or unliked will be the same element that we pass down into this function, whatever we called it. And in this case, we called it like button. Same for this text, the like text. This is going to be the default text if we are unliking, and this will be the like text if we are liking. And for the uh, last parameter, in both cases, this will be the text that we're going to use for the original text or the like text, depending on what function outcome we get. So this will be used when we want to unlike something, and this will be used when we want to like something. If you notice, both of these larger functions are being used right here in one line to decide what all of this was trying to decide earlier. So now what we can do, just to prove that this works, is we're going to move this down into here and get rid of all of this. Just make our one liner and change it to like this article, man. Let's see what we get. We click it, we should get like this article, man. When we unlike it, we should get something different. Up. Oh, sucks. Look like we do not. Up. Oh, there we go. Don't know where that came from. Had a little error there. So now if we refresh this, we get liked. Like this article, man. Like this thing. Bang. So we get like this article, liked, like this thing. And there's our like button. Hope you liked it. And there's our one line of code doing all of the work.